Graphite, archaically referred to as plumbago, is a crystalline form of the element carbon with its atoms arranged in a hexagonal structure. It occurs naturally in this form and is the most stable form of carbon under standard conditions. Under high pressures and temperatures it converts to diamond. Graphite is used in pencils and lubricants. Its high conductivity makes it useful in electrodes. Topic. Types and varieties The principal types of natural graphite, each occurring in different types of ore deposits, are Crystalline small flakes of graphite or flake graphite occurs as isolated, flat, plate-like particles with hexagonal edges if unbroken. When broken the edges can be irregular or angular. Amorphous graphite, very fine flake graphite is sometimes called amorphous. Lump graphite or vein graphite occurs in fissure veins or fractures and appears as massive platy intergrowths of fibrous or acicular crystalline aggregates, and is probably hydrothermal in origin. Highly ordered pyrolytic graphite refers to graphite with an angular spread between the graphite sheets of less than one degree. The name, graphite fiber, is sometimes used to refer to carbon fibers or carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Occurrence Graphite occurs in metamorphic rocks as a result of the reduction of sedimentary carbon compounds during metamorphism. It also occurs in igneous rocks and in meteorites. Minerals associated with graphite include quartz, calcite, micas and tourmaline. The principal export sources of mined graphite are in order of tonnage, China, Mexico, Canada, Brazil, and Madagascar. In meteorites, graphite occurs with troilite and silicate minerals. Small graphitic crystals in meteoritic iron are called cliftonite. Some microscopic grains have distinctive isotopic compositions, indicating that they were formed before the solar system. They are one of about 12 known types of mineral that predate the solar system and have also been detected in molecular clouds. These minerals were formed in the ejecta when supernovae exploded or low to intermediate sized stars expelled their outer envelopes late in their lives. Graphite may be the second or third oldest mineral in the universe. Topic: <laughs> Properties. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Structure. Graphite has a layered, planar structure. The individual layers are called graphene. In each layer, the carbon atoms are arranged in a honeycomb lattice with separation of 0.142 nm, and the distance between planes is 0.335 nm. Atoms in the plane are bonded covalently, with only three of the four potential bonding sites satisfied. The fourth electron is free to migrate in the plane, making graphite electrically conductive. However, it does not conduct in a direction at right angles to the plane. Bonding between layers is via weak van der Waals bonds, which allows layers of graphite to be easily separated, or to slide past each other. The two known forms of graphite, alpha hexagonal and beta rhombohedral, have very similar physical properties, except for that the graphene layers stack slightly differently. The alpha graphite may be either flat or buckled. The alpha form can be converted to the beta form through mechanical treatment and the beta form reverts to the alpha form when it is heated above 1300 degrees Celsius. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Thermodynamics. The equilibrium pressure and temperature conditions for a transition between graphite and diamond is well established theoretically and experimentally. The pressure changes linearly between 1.7 GPa at 0 K and 12 GPa at 5000 K the diamond, graphite, liquid triple point. However, the phases have a wide region about this line where they can coexist. At normal temperature and pressure, 20 degrees Celsius K and 1 standard atmosphere 0.10 MPa, the stable phase of carbon is graphite, but diamond is metastable and its rate of conversion to graphite is negligible. However, at temperatures above about 4,500 K, diamond rapidly converts to graphite. 
Rapid conversion of graphite to diamond requires pressures well above the equilibrium line. At 2000 K, a pressure of 35 gigapascals is needed. Topic: Other properties. The acoustic and thermal properties of graphite are highly anisotropic, since phonons propagate quickly along the tightly bound planes, but are slower to travel from one plane to another. Graphite's high thermal stability and electrical and thermal conductivity facilitate its widespread use as electrodes and refractories in high temperature material processing applications. However, in oxygen containing atmospheres, graphite readily oxidizes to form carbon dioxide at temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius and above. Graphite is an electrical conductor, hence, useful in such applications as arc lamp electrodes. It can conduct electricity due to the vast electron delocalization within the carbon layers, a phenomenon called aromaticity. These valence electrons are free to move, so are able to conduct electricity. However, the electricity is primarily conducted within the plane of the layers. The conductive properties of powdered graphite allow its use as pressure sensor in carbon microphones. Graphite and graphite powder are valued in industrial applications for their self-lubricating and dry lubricating properties. There is a common belief that graphite's lubricating properties are solely due to the loose interlamellar coupling between sheets in the structure. However, it has been shown that in a vacuum environment such as in technologies for use in space, graphite degrades as a lubricant, due to the hypoxic conditions. This observation led to the hypothesis that the lubrication is due to the presence of fluids between the layers, such as air and water, which are naturally adsorbed from the environment. This hypothesis has been refuted by studies showing that air and water are not absorbed. Recent studies suggest that an effect called superlubricity can also account for graphite's lubricating properties. The use of graphite is limited by its tendency to facilitate pitting corrosion in some stainless steel, and to promote galvanic corrosion between dissimilar metals due to its electrical conductivity. It is also corrosive to aluminium in the presence of moisture. For this reason, the U.S. Air Force banned its use as a lubricant in aluminium aircraft, and discouraged its use in aluminium containing automatic weapons. Even graphite pencil marks on aluminium parts may facilitate corrosion. Another high-temperature lubricant, hexagonal boron nitride, has the same molecular structure as graphite. It is sometimes called white graphite, due to its similar properties. When a large number of crystallographic defects bind these planes together, graphite loses its lubrication properties and becomes what is known as pyrolytic graphite. It is also highly anisotropic, and diamagnetic, thus it will float in midair above a strong magnet. If it is made in a fluidized bed at 1000 to 1300 degrees Celsius then it is isotropic turbostratic, and is used in blood contacting devices like mechanical heart valves and is called pyrolytic carbon, and is not diamagnetic. Pyrolytic graphite and pyrolytic carbon are often confused but are very different materials. Natural and crystalline graphites are not often used in pure form as structural materials, due to their sheer planes, brittleness, and inconsistent mechanical properties. Topic History of natural graphite use In the 4th millennium BC, during the Neolithic age in southeastern Europe, the Merida culture used graphite in a ceramic paint for decorating pottery, some time before 1565 some sources say as early as 1500, an enormous deposit of graphite was discovered on the approach to grey knots from the hamlet of Seathwaite in Barrowdale Parish, Cumbria, England, which the locals found useful for marking sheep. During the reign of Elizabeth I (1558–1603), Borrowdale graphite was used as a refractory material to line molds for cannonballs, resulting in rounder, smoother balls that could be fired farther, contributing to the strength of the English navy. This particular deposit of graphite was extremely pure and soft, and could easily be cut into sticks. Because of its military importance, this unique mine and its production were strictly controlled by the crown. During the 19th century, graphite's uses greatly expanded to include stove polish, lubricants, paints, crucibles, foundry facings, and pencils, a major factor in the expansion of educational tools during the first great rise of education for the masses. The British Empire controlled most of the world's production especially from Ceylon, but production from Austrian, German and American deposits expanded by mid-century. 
For example, the Dixon Crucible Company of Jersey City, New Jersey, founded by Joseph Dixon inventor and partner Orestes Cleveland in 1845, opened mines in the Lake Ticonderoga district of New York, built a processing plant there, and a factory to manufacture pencils, crucibles and other products in New Jersey, described in the Engineering and Mining Journal 21 December 1878. The Dixon pencil is still in production. The beginnings of the revolutionary froth flotation process are associated with graphite mining. Included in the E and M J article on the Dixon Crucible Company is a sketch of the floating tanks used in the age-old process of extracting graphite. Because graphite is so light, the mix of graphite and waste was sent through a final series of water tanks where a cleaner graphite floated off, which left waste to drop out. In an 1877 patent, the two brothers Bessel Adolf and August of Dresden, Germany took this floating process a step further and added a small amount of oil to the tanks and boiled the mix, an agitation or frothing step, to collect the graphite, the first steps toward the future flotation process. Adolf Bessel received the Wohler Medal for the patented process that upgraded the recovery of graphite to 90% from the German deposit. In 1977, the German Society of Mining Engineers and Metallurgists organized a special symposium dedicated to their discovery and, thus, the 100th anniversary of flotation. In the United States, in 1885, Hezekiah Bradford of Philadelphia patented a similar process, but it is uncertain if his process was used successfully in the nearby graphite deposits of Chester County, Pennsylvania, a major producer by the 1890s. The Bessel process was limited in use, primarily because of the abundant cleaner deposits found around the globe, which needed not much more than hand sorting to gather the pure graphite. The state of the art, ca. 1900, is described in the Canadian Department of Mines report on graphite mines and mining, when Canadian deposits began to become important producers of graphite. Other names. Historically, graphite was called black lead or plumbago. Plumbago was commonly used in its massive mineral form. Both of these names arise from confusion with the similar appearing lead ores, particularly galena. The Latin word for lead, plumbum, gave its name to the English term for this grey metallic sheened mineral and even to the leadworts or plumbagos, plants with flowers that resemble this colour. The term black lead usually refers to a powdered or processed graphite, matte black in colour. Abraham Gottlob Werner coined the name graphite, writing stone, in 1789. He attempted to clear up the confusion between molybdena, plumbago and black lead after Carl Wilhelm Scheele in 1778 proved that there are at least three different minerals. Scheele's analysis showed that the chemical compounds molybdenum sulfide molybdenite, lead two sulfide galena and graphite were three different soft black minerals. Uses of natural graphite Natural graphite is mostly used for refractories, batteries, steelmaking, expanded graphite, brake linings, foundry facings and lubricants. Refractories <inaudible> 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 The use of graphite as a refractory material began before 1900 with the graphite crucible used to hold molten metal, this is now a minor part of refractories. In the mid-1980s, the carbon magnesite brick became important, and a bit later the alumina graphite shape. As of 2017 the order of importance is, alumina graphite shapes, carbon magnesite brick, monolithics, gunning and ramming mixes, and then crucibles. Crucibles began using very large flake graphite, and carbon magnesite brick requiring not quite so large flake graphite. For these and others there is now much more flexibility in the size of flake required, and amorphous graphite is no longer restricted to low-end refractories. Alumina graphite shapes are used as continuous casting ware, such as nozzles and troughs, to convey the molten steel from ladle to mold, and carbon magnesite bricks line steel converters and electric arc furnaces to withstand extreme temperatures. Graphite blocks are also used in parts of blast furnace linings where the high thermal conductivity of the graphite is critical. High purity monolithics are often used as a continuous furnace lining instead of carbon magnesite bricks. 
The U.S. and European refractories industry had a crisis in 2000–2003, with an indifferent market for steel and a declining refractory consumption per ton of steel underlying firm buyouts and many plant closures. Many of the plant closures resulted from the acquisition of Harbison Walker refractories by RHI AG and some plants had their equipment auctioned off. Since much of the lost capacity was for carbon magnesite brick, graphite consumption within the refractories area moved towards alumina graphite shapes and monolithics, and away from brick. The major source of carbon magnesite brick is now imports from China. Almost all of the above refractories are used to make steel and account for 75% of refractory consumption, the rest is used by a variety of industries, such as cement. According to the USGS, U.S. natural graphite consumption in refractories comprised 12,500 tons in 2010. Batteries The use of graphite in batteries has increased in the last 30 years. Natural and synthetic graphite are used to construct electrodes in major battery technologies. The lithium-ion battery utilizes roughly twice the amount of graphite as lithium carbonate. The demand for batteries, primarily nickel metal hydride and lithium-ion batteries, caused a growth in demand for graphite in the late 1980s and early 1990s, a growth driven by portable electronics, such as portable CD players and power tools. Laptops, mobile phones, tablets, and smartphone products have increased the demand for batteries. Electric vehicle batteries are anticipated to increase graphite demand. As an example, a lithium-ion battery in a fully electric Nissan LEAF contains nearly 40 kilograms of graphite. <laughs> Steelmaking Natural graphite in steelmaking mostly goes into raising the carbon content in molten steel, and can also be used to lubricate the dyes used to extrude hot steel. Carbon additives are subject to competitive pricing from alternatives such as synthetic graphite powder, petroleum coke, and other forms of carbon. A carbon razor is added to increase the carbon content of the steel to the specified level. An estimate based on USGS's graphite consumption statistics indicates that 10,500 tons were used in this fashion in the U.S. in 2005. <laughs> Brake linings Natural amorphous and fine flake graphite are used in brake linings or brake shoes for heavier vehicles, and became important with the need to substitute for asbestos. This use has been important for quite some time, but non-asbestos organic now compositions are beginning to reduce graphite's market share. A brake lining industry shakeout with some plant closures has not been beneficial, nor has an indifferent automotive market. According to the USGS, U.S. natural graphite consumption in brake linings was 6,510 tons in 2005. Foundry facings and lubricants A foundry facing mold wash is a water-based paint of amorphous or fine flake graphite. Painting the inside of a mold with it and letting it dry leaves a fine graphite coat that will ease separation of the object cast after the hot metal has cooled. Graphite lubricants are specialty items for use at very high or very low temperatures, as forging dye lubricant, an anti-seize agent, a gear lubricant for mining machinery, and to lubricate locks. Having low grit graphite, or even better, no grit graphite ultra -high purity, is highly desirable. It can be used as a dry powder, in water or oil, or as colloidal graphite a permanent suspension in a liquid. An estimate based on USGS graphite consumption statistics indicates that 2,200 tons was used in this fashion in 2005. Topic: <inaudible> Pencils. The ability to leave marks on paper and other objects gave graphite its name, given in 1789 by German mineralogist Abraham Gottlob Werner. It stems from graphane, meaning to write or draw in ancient Greek. From the 16th century, all pencils were made with leads of English natural graphite, but modern pencil lead is most commonly a mix of powdered graphite and clay. It was invented by Nicolas Jacques Conte in 1795. 
It is chemically unrelated to the metal lead, whose ores had a similar appearance, hence the continuation of the name. Plumbago is another older term for natural graphite used for drawing, typically as a lump of the mineral without a wood casing. The term plumbago drawing is normally restricted to 17th and 18th century works, mostly portraits. Today, pencils are still a small but significant market for natural graphite. Around 7% of the 1.1 million tons produced in 2011 was used to make pencils. Low-quality amorphous graphite is used and sourced mainly from China. Other uses Natural graphite has found uses in zinc carbon batteries, in electric motor brushes, and various specialized applications. Graphite of various hardness or softness results in different qualities and tones when used as an artistic medium. Railroads would often mix powdered graphite with waste oil or linseed oil to create a heat-resistant protective coating for the exposed portions of a steam locomotive's boiler, such as the smokebox or lower part of the firebox. Topic. Expanded graphite Expanded graphite is made by immersing natural flake graphite in a bath of chromic acid, then concentrated sulfuric acid, which forces the crystal lattice planes apart, thus expanding the graphite. The expanded graphite can be used to make graphite foil or used directly as hot top. Compound to insulate molten metal in a ladle or red hot steel ingots and decrease heat loss, or as fire stops fitted around a fire door or in sheet metal collars surrounding plastic pipe during a fire, the graphite expands and chars to resist fire penetration and spread, or to make high performance gasket material for high temperature use. After being made into graphite foil, the foil is machined and assembled into the bipolar plates in fuel cells. The foil is made into heat sinks for laptop computers which keeps them cool while saving weight, and is made into a foil laminate that can be used in valve packings or made into gaskets. Old style packings are now a minor member of this grouping, fine flake graphite in oils or greases for uses requiring heat resistance. A gone estimate of current U.S. natural graphite consumption in this end use is 7,500 tons. Topic. Intercalated graphite Graphite forms intercalation compounds with some metals and small molecules. In these compounds, the host molecule or atom gets sandwiched between the graphite layers, resulting in a type of compound with variable stoichiometry. A prominent example of an intercalation compound is potassium graphite, denoted by the formula Kc8. Some graphite intercalation compounds are superconductors. The highest transition temperature by June 2009, Tc. equals 11.5 K is achieved in CAC 6, and it further increases under applied pressure 15.1 K at 8 GPa. Graphite's ability to intercalate lithium ions without significant damage from swelling is what makes it the dominant anode material in lithium ion batteries. Equals Uses of synthetic graphite Invention of a process to produce synthetic graphite In 1893 Charles Street of Le Carbone discovered a process for making artificial graphite. Another process to make synthetic graphite was invented accidentally by Edward Goodrich Acheson In the mid-1890s, Acheson discovered that overheating carborundum silicon carbide or SIC produced almost pure graphite. While studying the effects of high temperature on carborundum, he had found that silicon vaporizes at about 4,150 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit, leaving the carbon behind in graphitic carbon. This graphite was another major discovery for him, and it became extremely valuable and helpful as a lubricant. In 1896, Acheson received a patent for his method of synthesizing graphite, and in 1897 started commercial production. The Acheson Graphite Co. was formed in 1899. 
Scientific research Highly oriented pyrolytic graphite is the highest quality synthetic form of graphite. It is used in scientific research, in particular, as a length standard for scanner calibration of scanning probe microscope. Electrodes <inaudible> 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 Graphite electrodes carry the electricity that melts scrap iron and steel, and sometimes direct reduced iron dry, in electric arc furnaces, which are the vast majority of steel furnaces. They are made from petroleum coke after it is mixed with coal tar pitch. They are then extruded and shaped, baked to carbonize the binder pitch, and finally graphitized by heating it to temperatures approaching 3000 degrees Celsius, at which the carbon atoms arrange into graphite. They can vary in size up to 3.5 meters 11 feet long and 75 centimeters 30 in, in diameter. An increasing proportion of global steel is made using electric arc furnaces, and the electric arc furnace itself is becoming more efficient, making more steel per ton of electrode. An estimate based on USGS data indicates that graphite electrode consumption was 197,000 tons in 2005. Electrolytic aluminium smelting also uses graphitic carbon electrodes. On a much smaller scale, synthetic graphite electrodes are used in electrical discharge machining (EDM), commonly to make injection molds for plastics. Equals <laughs> equals. <laughs> Topic. Powder and scrap equals equals The powder is made by heating powdered petroleum coke above the temperature of graphitization, sometimes with minor modifications. The graphite scrap comes from pieces of unusable electrode material in the manufacturing stage or after use and lathe turnings, usually after crushing and sizing. Most synthetic graphite powder goes to carbon raising in steel competing with natural graphite, with some used in batteries and brake linings. According to the USGS, U.S. synthetic graphite powder and scrap production was 95,000 tons in 2001 latest data. Neutron moderator Equals equals Special grades of synthetic graphite, such as gilsacarbon, also find use as a matrix and neutron moderator within nuclear reactors. Its low neutron cross-section also recommends it for use in proposed fusion reactors. Care must be taken that reactor-grade graphite is free of neutron-absorbing materials such as boron, widely used as the seed electrode in commercial graphite deposition systems. This caused the failure of the Germans' World War II graphite-based nuclear reactors. Since they could not isolate the difficulty they were forced to use far more expensive heavy water moderators. Graphite used for nuclear reactors is often referred to as nuclear graphite. <laughs> Other uses <laughs> Graphite carbon fiber and carbon nanotubes are also used in carbon fiber reinforced plastics, and in heat resistant composites such as reinforced carbon carbon RCC. Commercial structures made from carbon fiber graphite composites include fishing rods, golf club shafts, bicycle frames, sports car body panels, the fuselage of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and pool cue sticks and have been successfully employed in reinforced concrete. The mechanical properties of carbon fiber graphite reinforced plastic composites and gray cast iron are strongly influenced by the role of graphite in these materials. In this context, the term 100% graphite is often loosely used to refer to a pure mixture of carbon reinforcement and resin, while the term composite is used for composite materials with additional ingredients. Modern smokeless powder is coated in graphite to prevent the buildup of static charge. Graphite has been used in at least three radar absorbent materials. It was mixed with rubber in Sumpf and Schornsteinfeger, which were used on U boat snorkels to reduce their radar cross section. It was also used in tiles on early F-117 Nighthawk stealth strike fighters. Graphite composites are used as absorber for high-energy particles e.g. in the LHC beam dump. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Graphite mining, beneficiation, and milling. Graphite is mined by both open pit and underground methods. Graphite usually needs beneficiation. This may be carried out by hand picking the pieces of gang rock and hand screening the product or by crushing the rock and floating out the graphite. Beneficiation by flotation encounters the difficulty that graphite is very soft and marks coats the particles of gang. This makes the marked gang particles float off with the graphite, yielding impure concentrate. There are two ways of obtaining a commercial concentrate or product, repeated regrinding and floating up to seven times to purify the concentrate, or by acid leaching dissolving the gang with hydrofluoric acid for a silicate gang or hydrochloric acid for a carbonate gang. In milling, the incoming graphite products and concentrates can be ground before being classified, sized or screened, with the coarser flake size fractions below 8 mesh, 8 to 20 mesh, 20 to 50 mesh carefully preserved, and then the carbon contents are determined. Some standard blends can be prepared from the different fractions, each with a certain flake size distribution and carbon content. Custom blends can also be made for individual customers who want a certain flake size distribution and carbon content. If flake size is unimportant, the concentrate can be ground more freely. Typical end products include a fine powder for use as a slurry in oil drilling and coatings for foundry molds, carbon razor in the steel industry synthetic graphite powder and powdered petroleum coke can also be used as carbon razor. Environmental impacts from graphite mills consist of air pollution including fine particulate exposure of workers and also soil contamination from powder spillages leading to heavy metal contamination of soil. According to the United States Geological Survey USGS, world production of natural graphite in 2016 was 1,200,000 tons, of which the following major exporters are, China 780,000 t, India 170,000 t, Brazil 80,000 t, Turkey 32,000 t, and North Korea 30,000 t. Graphite is not mined in the United States, but U.S. production of synthetic graphite in 2010 was 134,000 t valued at $1.07 billion. Occupational <inaudible> <inaudible> safety <inaudible> 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 People can be exposed to graphite in the workplace by breathing it in, skin contact, and eye contact. United States The Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA has set the legal limit, permissible exposure limit for graphite exposure in the workplace as a time-weighted average TWA of 15 million particles per cubic foot milligrams per cubic meter over an 8-hour workday. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health NIOSH, has set a recommended exposure limit REL, of TWA 2.5 mg per cubic meter respirable dust over an 8-hour workday. At levels of 1,250 mg per cubic meter, graphite is immediately dangerous to life and health. Graphite <laughs> <laughs> recycling <laughs> 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 The most common way of recycling graphite occurs when synthetic graphite electrodes are either manufactured and pieces are cut off or lathe turnings are discarded, or the electrode or other are used all the way down to the electrode holder. A new electrode replaces the old one, but a sizable piece of the old electrode remains. This is crushed and sized, and the resulting graphite powder is mostly used to raise the carbon content of molten steel. Graphite-containing refractories are sometimes also recycled, but often not because of their graphite. The largest volume items, such as carbon magnesite bricks that contain only 15 to 25 percent graphite, usually contain too little graphite. However, some recycled carbon magnesite brick is used as the basis for furnace repair materials, and also crushed carbon magnesite brick is used in slag conditioners. While crucibles have a high graphite content, the volume of crucibles used and then recycled is very small. A high-quality flake graphite product that closely resembles natural flake graphite can be made from steelmaking kish. Kish is a large volume near molten waste skimmed from the molten iron feed to a basic oxygen furnace, and consists of a mix of graphite precipitated out of the supersaturated iron, lime-rich slag, and some iron. The iron is recycled on site, leaving a mixture of graphite and slag. 
The best recovery process uses hydraulic classification, which utilizes a flow of water to separate minerals by specific gravity. Graphite is light and settles nearly last to get a 70% graphite rough concentrate. Leaching this concentrate with hydrochloric acid gives a 95% graphite product with a flake size ranging from 10 mesh down. See also